In 2023, there was an estimated amount of over 300,000 scams that were reported, amounting to almost $500 million loss. Yeah, this is just what gets reported from the average person like you and me. Imagine what must be happening behind the closed doors of shady corporate headquarters. Now, I'm sure we're all familiar with scamsters like Charles Ponzi and Bernie Madoff, but there are quite a few others who didn't exactly become global sensations, but managed to stir up the pot regardless. On that note, let's explore the top 10 frauds you've probably never heard of. And number 10, Gregor McGregor, a fake country. Imagine creating an entirely fictional country all the way back in the 1800s. Meet Gregor McGregor. Yes, that's his real name. A loyal officer of the British Army. McGregor would often travel to present-day Honduras and Belize. In one fine day, he decided to trick everyone by saying he received a native land grant from the local leader of one of these areas. McGregor came back to London and officially established the Republic of Poyais. This wasn't even some kind of casual prank. Bro actually took the trouble to create a flag, a coat of arms, local currency, and all the other requirements of a sovereign nation. Once that was done, he went on to sell off the land to investors and settlers in the London markets. He even issued sovereign debt backed by the promise of this new nation and encouraged people to relocate there by spreading false info about the capital city and its fertile soil. He was successful too, as the first group of settlers arrived in Poyais in 1823, but the only thing they found was a dense jungle and abandoned wood shacks. These settlers had to deal with disease and hunger, and almost 200 of them lost their lives. Once word of this reached London, they immediately arrested MacGregor but he managed to flee to France while awaiting his trial. Guess what? He tried the same Poyai scam with the French investors as well. Luckily, MacGregor eventually landed up in Venezuela and helped the country fight for its independence. At least he wasn't all that bad. And number 9. Denomis Coin Resources A Typical Crypto Scam you should always be careful with your money and investments, especially if they happen to be in cryptocurrency. However, with the craze of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and God knows what else, the general public was ready to believe anything no matter how ridiculous it may have sounded at the time. Enter Denomis Coin Resources, a company based in Uganda that specialized in crypto investments, or so people thought. They lured in over 4,000 people as investors and managed to collect hundreds of millions of shillings from them, roughly translating to close to $3 million. Like all the other crypto investment scams, Denomis Coins lured in investors with unrealistic promises of excessive returns. They were operational between February 14, 2018 and December 3, 2019 during which their central premise for investors was to offer exactly 30% returns on their investments in 21 days, which simply cannot be guaranteed in any asset class, regardless of the situation. Soon enough, the company closed shop in December 2019, which caused all their investors to panic. The cops did manage to arrest the criminals when the complaints started pouring in, and even though the founders have helped with refunding the money, there are still quite a few accounts on hold due to this abrupt scam. At number 8, CR Bansali. Mutual funds aren't safe with this man. The world may not have heard much about Chain Roop Bansali, but he rocked the very foundation of the Indian stock market in 1996. Bansali was a chartered accountant who was off to shaky beginnings when he was caught short charging clients while working in one of India's leading registrars. In 1992, Bansali altered the CRB Mutual Fund and CRB Share Custodial Services, along with 133 unlisted companies and subsidiaries. He utilized these and leveraged the boom in the non-banking finance company sector. Basically, Bansali started his own line of Ponzi schemes, wherein he would lure investors to pay as earlier investors and collect funds from recent investors. Between 1992 and 1996, he managed to raise close to INR 900 crore 
or $800 million in today's money through fixed deposits, debentures, and bonds, transferring the funds in his non-existing companies. After he failed to repay all the high-interest returns back to the public, he borrowed multiple loans and tried to generate profits using his own money to buy back his shares, or cross-share between existing funds. Bonsali's relationships with celebrities, religious, and political leaders enabled him to recruit new investors and customers. In 1996, the media exposed his fraudulent activities, thus banning Bonsali from launching any other new schemes by this time. Around 20,000 investors were doomed and resorted to the Delhi High Court for redemption. It was almost after 20 years that the investors were finally granted some kind of provisional NAV. And number 7. Velox 10 Global – Crypto Strikes Again There seem to be a pattern with crypto scams and while most of them are forgotten about, there are a few that stand out in terms of the money robbed. Take Velox 10 Global as an example. These guys kicked things off with an impressive launch at the Intercontinental Hotel in September 2017 which gave their potential investors some security in terms of legitimacy. The Brazilian company operated on an MLM model, which meant that their investors would earn more money if they brought on more investors of their own. Hmm, this had Pyramid Scheme written all over it, didn't it? Velox charged a membership fee that roughly translated to $100, along with an upgrade fee of $200. The promised daily returns were $4,000, which was outright ridiculous. They even hired lots of local marketers to push their services out to the public. But once a company was exposed as a fraud, nobody could even reach out to these marketers anymore. By 2019, people lost millions of shillings. And with no source of contact, they went straight to court. Velox 10 Global's website is up for sale and all other traces have only led to dummy accounts. So, I guess they knew how to cover their tracks. Number 6. McKeeson & Robbins Fake Inventory Want to pull off a gigantic inventory scam? Just use a guy with multiple fake identities. This is the case of McKeeson & Robbins Drug and Chemical Company of the mid-1920s and Philip Musica, a man known for criminal acts and fake names. After the U.S. prohibition in 1919, Musica used the name Frank DiCosta to create a company that made hair tonic and other products that had a high alcohol content. These products were then sold to bootleggers, who simply used the alcohol to these products to create illegal liquor, which was then sold to customers in the black market. Musica also seeded the company with his own family members to loot the company. This fraud included fake purchase orders, inflated inventory, and skimming cash from company sale. What's really surprising is that all of this occurred despite the presence of Price Waterhouse as the company's auditors. Eleven years later, when the scam was finally detected in 1937, the SEC calculated that the total of $19 million in fictitious inventory was on the balance sheet. In today's money, that would be equal to approximately $300 million in current dollars. And number 5. Mirror Trading International – AI Forex Scam You've got to hand it to the perpetrators of Mirror Trading International. They used the whole AI trend to their advantage and started a Forex-based Ponzi scheme to lure in their investors. Having launched in 2019, MTI presented itself as an investment platform and asked new users for at least $100 in the form of Bitcoin as a starting fee. They claimed to pool these funds into a trading account on a Forex derivative trading platform. Here, they would seemingly conduct high-frequency trading by using artificial intelligence that could allegedly produce average daily returns of 0.5%, which was obviously unbelievable but still managed to bring in a haul of over 4.5 billion rand, roughly translating to almost $250 million. Soon enough, the liquidators issued a joint summons against 18 individuals to pay this amount to cover the scheme's debts. That too was 7% interest. Yeah, it's safe to say that people were mad. At number 4, Panama Money Technologies – Soliciting Funds if your headquarters happens to be in Panama City, 
then that's the first sign of you being shady. Apparently, the popular but highly questionable Panam Money Technologies, which claimed on its website to be the next stage in managed forex trading, had been going strong for almost two years when things began to fall apart around March of 2010. During this time, their investors started facing difficulties in accessing the funds in their managed accounts held with the company. On top of that, many investors reported seeing their money simply disappear from their accounts, often because of an early withdrawal penalty that Pana Money seemingly charged to investors who claimed they had not even requested a withdrawal. Another part of the Pana Money scam was that many of their clients had their accounts supposedly hacked by a third party. Here, they had their email addresses changed, along with their banking information for withdrawals and the passwords for those accounts as well. After being hacked, the client account would subsequently be drained by the third party with an early withdrawal request. This resulted in a 12% commission fee plus forfeiture of all profits made in the account while the account was open. Millions of dollars were lost in this process with individuals losing as much as over $100,000 personally. And number three, Crazy Eddie, cooking books. Crazy Eddie was an electronics and appliances retail store chain run by the Antar family, which was known for its crazy prices. However, this was simply to perpetuate a fraud that ran from 1969 to 1987. It began with underreporting the firm's taxable income by skimming cash sales, paying employees in cash to avoid payroll taxes, and reporting fake insurance claims to the company's carriers. They scaled back the fraud when they applied for an IPO in 1984 and succeeded with a share price of $8. After that, they reversed the flow of skimmed cash and moved funds from secret bank accounts and safety deposit boxes into company coffers showing it as revenue. They also inflated and created phony inventory on the books to boost profits. The fraud was finally exposed in 1987 after the Antar family was ousted from Crazy Eddie after a successful hostile takeover by an investment group. Number 2. Equity Funding Corporation of America Mutual funds are at it again. The Equity Funding Corporation of America started something unique in the 1960s. They sold mutual funds to customers who would then borrow against the fund to buy life insurance. This was based on the assumption that the earnings from the fund would be enough to cover the premiums. In 1964, the EFCA was struggling to compile its annual report. So the CEO, Stanley Goldblum, ordered four fictitious accounting entries to be made in order to meet the deadline. This fraud continued with phony life insurance policies being made to back up these earlier false entries. The company then reinsured these fake policies with a number of other insurers and even faked the deaths of some of these non-existent individuals. Tens of thousands of phony insurance policies and nearly $2 billion in non-existent revenues were made over a multi-year period. In 1973, a disgruntled ex-employee reported a scheme to Ray Dirks, a Wall Street analyst, who covered the insurance industry. He then helped uncover the scam with its own research and due diligence. At number 1. Harshad Meta Scam – A Culprit and a Victim This one's so famous in India that there's TV shows on it. But the rest of the world should also remember the name of Harshad Mehta. The 1992 stock market scam is often referred to by the Meta's name, who brought about the downfall of the stock market. The scam featured an embezzlement of INR 1,439 crores, translating to $3 billion. That led to a severe crunch and drastic loss of wealth in the life savings of many investors. The eventual damage was around INR 3,542 crores, or $7 billion. Harshad Mehta is also framed as a victim due to alleged political alliances that included prominent governmental figures. However, it remains true that Mehta exploited the loopholes for his personal benefit, manipulated the market, and was heavily involved in many banking frauds. I'd love to talk more about it, but it's detailed enough to take a whole video, so maybe I'll do that later. Like, share, and subscribe if you liked the video. 
and feel free to suggest any topics you'd like to see on my future videos. See you soon, and happy trading!